What's up guys, Justin here, and today I'm bringing you guys the first look of iOS 7. This beta was just released a few hours following Apple's WWDC 2013 keynote, and you look at it and it does have a little bit of a different look to it. The core functions and design is pretty much like what you may expect from iOS, but you can see that many of the major icons and default applications have changed. As you know, Johnny Ive has taken over as part of the design department of iOS, so you may expect many cool design enhancements to this and a kind of a new look to it. On the front screen or the lock screen, you can see it has a lot like an Android Nexus look to it, a nice holo look. You slide to the side, you've got your passcode lock if you have one. You slide it to the side, you've got your home screen and you may expect it to be the same as it was before, the nice scrolling and the app tiles on the front, but I am impressed by a lot of things that Apple has included. First off is the control center. You swipe it up, you've got all your major settings, your toggles. You've got the bottom where you have your flashlight, you could turn that on. You've also got a clock, a calculator quick access, your camera quick access. You can also control the volume of your music that is currently playing and also change the brightness of your screen very easily. And you've also got your other toggles such as airplane mode, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, night mode, etc. So this is a great feature that we've seen. A lot of people who jailbreak their devices would have a toggle like this. So finally, Apple has moved ahead and made it very easy for you to access your quick access and major settings that you do change quite often. Scrolling down, notifications tabs has also been somewhat improved. Apple wants to make it a little bit more interactive and for the most part, it does look very similar or almost the same as the previous version of the notification center. But you scroll around the side, there's the notifications that you may have missed from before, your all notifications, and also today's calendar, which is displayed right on the today tab, of course. So if you like to schedule things using Apple's calendar, this is a major benefit. I think with iOS 7, Apple has really done a great job in meeting the needs of what people have wished for and looking at the most popular jailbreak tweaks, a lot of those tweaks um, have been pretty much put into iOS and Apple's version. So one of them is multitasking. You can see that instead of having the multitasking tabs on the bottom, Apple has now had a full multitasking window or what they like to call cards, where all your multitasking windows or applications that are actively running will show up there and you can easily access them and close any applications you may have or want to close very very easily so i think this is definitely a good addition that a lot of people really wanted um, on the wish list of many but really didn't expect to see but here we've got it i'm really happy that they have done that and i think it is a great improvement Moving on to iTunes, Apple has also made some improvements to this. Not only can you listen to music for free, but it also allows you to create your own stations through Apple's recommendations based on the season, the theme, etc. There are just so many things you can pick from, and it does let you stream the music for free, and it is ad supported. However, if you have an iTunes mem match membership like me, you do have no ads, and you can listen to music seamlessly all for free. And if you like it, you can either add it to your wish list, for example, or add it to your own station, and eventually purchase it. But in terms of the actual app interface and how the music is laid in there it looks a lot like the previous version under the photos again it is what you're used to with the albums on the front but apple has also added quite a few additional features throughout the ios 7 interface you can see that everything is much lighter with the transparent white and grayish scheme and the blue interface which is something i really liked and with the new albums and the way to view your images it allows people to collage their images and see where they have gone and have a nice collection sorted out by apple depending on your date location for example the year and time and you can just nicely view all your images in particular there so you could see that all the images are very nicely sorted by apple and there's just your albums as always so there really isn't much to the photo application but there is some good additions Another feature that I feel is kind of small, but for some people maybe very useful, is the AirDrop application. What it does is it allows you to transfer files and images very easily between um, iOS users without having to actually bump your devices. Um, so it allows you to just transfer all the images or any files you may have and it will show up straight on the other person's device right away. So I think that is very useful as Apple eventually optimizes it. The camera also saw some improvements as well. Apple has been known to have a very simple camera interface and from using the Samsung Galaxy S4, I really feel that they should have added some more features. When you scroll around, it is easy to change between your cameras. You've got your square image, your um, panorama, you slide between the different camera modes and there's the video mode. And there you go, there's a photo mode. You can also add some filters. For example, like Instagram, they like to add photos that have filters on them. And you can also take a square image that is optimized for Instagram images. So. 
I really like that they have done that. A lot of other phones don't actually have that square mode. So you can just select some live filters and see what they look like as you take the image. So a lot of people I can see using this quite a bit. And other than that, all your other major features within the camera does stay the same. When you look at Safari, in the previous version of iOS, there really isn't anything wrong with it. But one thing I've always wished for is a unified search and browser bar, where you don't have to actually tap whether you want to use a Google search or type in your web browser page. As in a screen of about 4 inches, the top really isn't that wide and at times it can get pretty annoying. So there you can just type in your website or search something very easily. And I think Apple wanted to take it to a very simple and seamless approach that doesn't really get intrusive when you're viewing your web pages. You can see on the bottom, all the tabs are very light like a lot of the things in iOS 7 and it allows you to view your article without any distractions it just seems very nice and Safari when you even look at the Mavericks the OS 10 Mavericks they do have quite a few improvements of that and there you've also got your iCloud tabs from other devices and also your other tabs open. So there's just a tab open on my iPad, just give it a quick click and there you go, it pops right up. I've always really liked that feature since I am a heavy Apple user that has many Apple devices that are interconnected. Ever since Siri was introduced to the iPhone 4S in 2010 as a beta, Apple has been trying to make many improvements to it. They've always been very good on the visual side of things, presenting you with the information very beautifully and very nicely, but here they have kind of redesigned it. You can see there's the audio waves on the bottom, and Siri has not really been practical for me, and I'm sure a lot of people can say the same. I think Apple has really tried to add many new features and allowing it to answer more questions and overall become a smarter voice assistant, and that will definitely develop over time. In the mail application, something that I use almost or every hour probably, it is probably the app I've used the most and it is great that they have made improvements to that. It takes a lot from the mailbox application you may know of that was very popular. You have some slide gestures to put it in the trash or move your files very easily and again you have that nice white layout, very clean and something I really liked about it. You can reply with your messages and you can see that the keyboard is actually a two-tone. So when you're using Apple applications, they have the nice white keyboard and when you're using a regular application it just uses the regular keyboard you guys are used to and to go back to the actual inbox all you got to do is just slide the top um, or from the side either way will work well and there you go just go back to the different accounts you can see I have many accounts on there so I really like what Apple has done to the Apple inboxes and as an Android user that I've really liked over the past few weeks one of the major flaws is the mail when you look at the weather applications, again, Apple has answered the prayers of iOS users and improved their weather application. As you know, Yahoo Weather did come out quite a few months ago and it's been become very, very popular. And this is powered by Yahoo, so I think Apple has made quite a few nice interface changes to it. There is nice live applications as well, so it does show thunder, rain, or snow if it is raining or anything, but in Canada or in Victoria, you probably don't get much snow here, so you can see it's nice and sunny in Oak Bay, so you can see the temperature there and it very easily allows you to check your weather for the week. So I think it's a great thing that they have done that. As an iPhone user, I'm sure you guys use the text messaging app a lot, and again, Apple has gone with the clean layout, nice and white, clear, transparent, and the overall messages does say the same, but I have to say I really like the color scheme of blue and gray, and it just allows you to type very easily. So in general, there really isn't much of a change into the mail application, but since Johnny Ive did want to redesign the whole operating system of iOS 7, there is visual changes throughout the whole operating system wherever you may look. Some smaller features may include the background app syncing you can enable that allows apps to sync the data in the background while you're running it. And also there's the auto app updating, which is something that is on Android that I'm really happy has come over here. The apps will automatically update if you want them to for the app store. So you don't have to worry about checking your apps and updating them every time or something. This will do it right for you. And you also have some optimizations in terms of the lost iPhone. So find my iPhone, a very useful application when you need it. Apple has also made some slight improvements to that. From using the beta testing for the past few hours, I have to say I'm very happy with iOS 7. The battery life doesn't seem to be too great right now, but of course this is just a first beta version, and I'm very, very confident that Apple will be improving that. And in general, I'm pretty happy with it, and yes, it does take quite a bit of getting used to at first, but eventually everybody will have to adapt to the iOS 7 as Apple moves forward with their iOS ecosystem. 
To conclude, I feel that it has a good mix of a lot of those jailbreak tweaks that a lot of people are wishing for just because iOS previously did not have many of those features. And it also has kind of the simplistic look between Windows 8 on the mobile phone as well as Android functionality. So I think it's definitely a good mix and I definitely have faith moving forward with iOS as a person that was kind of shifting towards Android and its customizability. I have to say Apple has done a good job and if you saw the event, the reactions were pretty good of iOS 7. So thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video as it helps me out a lot and subscribe for some future coverage. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in my next video.